Hi guys, this is Dr. Sitar from the YouTube channel Doctor to Help. How are you doing today? Thank you for joining me in today's discussion. Today, we are going to talk about a very controversial subject, the origin of COVID-19. For those who don't know me, I'm Dr. Sitar, an internal medicine doctor, board certified practicing in Texas. This channel was started in December to provide free medical education. Before we go and jump into the current WHO findings on the latest investigation that was concluded in Wuhan on February 9th, let's talk about, take a walk in the old history lane. Does anybody remember Dr. Wen Liang Li? He was the young doctor who first warned people about COVID-19 like virus that was found in an isolated patient in the Wuhan hospital. Soon after he gave this information, the Chinese authorities were very quick to contact him and they warned about spreading rumors and told him to stop this illegal act. When CNN talked to this doctor, young doctor, Li, he told them that yes, when they contacted him from the police, he was afraid, he thought he would be detained and he was worried that his family will be worried about him. They asked him to sign a document say, stating that he did spread rumors and he promised to comply with the authorities. Dr. Lee was not the only person who was stopped this way. Multiple other doctors who kept their identity secret also came forward and stated that they were told not to disclose this information and they were afraid and thus they complied. So think about this. Dr. Lee gave out that information was at the end of December. Few days later, the wet Wuhan market was closed down by the Chinese authority. The whole place was wiped down clean. The reason being they wanted to stop the spread of infection. Think about a homicide mystery. The investigator always want to go there before anybody touches anything because they want to get the fresh information from the site. Did we lose a lot of valuable information when they did that? That at this point, we will never know. So the Chinese authority kind of stopped Dr. Li and his other colleagues from talking about COVID-19. Chinese people were informed that there was no human transmission of the COVID-19 virus. There's, these are just rumors. And different news network also stated the same thing. So Chinese people went about their own daily life, oblivious to what was happening. Middle of January, they had their new year. This is a big festival in China. Guess what? Most likely we had super spreader event. Also happened at probably the wet Wuhan market. So let's jump on to the WHO investigation. WHO has tried to go to China multiple times, February, July, and also in December. At one point, they were told that there were a couple of investigators who were going there, had some respiratory symptoms like sniffles, and two of them were positive for COVID-19 antibodies. So that trip was canceled. WHO asked China to run some investigation. A lot of data was collected according to their joint ventures, but these data were not available for review for WHO for a long time until they went there. In January, WHO openly criticized China for delaying the investigation process. Finally, who landed in China, Wuhan, for investigation. A team of at least 17 people were there, including Peter Daschak, who is a geologist who has worked at the Wuhan lab in 2014 with the Spain, Sp famous bat queen, Dr. Xiang Li. So, it is a lot of controversy for what information that came out from who, because of that conflict of interest. So what did they find? Several things. One, they visited the Wuhan lab and they said everything was immaculately 
documented, safety procedures were followed, and they felt it was unlikely there was a leak from that lab. Although they could not rule it out. Second, they also found symptoms similar to COVID-19 late November as early as late November, but clusters of respiratory symptoms and COVID-19 like illness was mainly seen early December. They also went to the Wuhan wet market. They f it was found in images that they had a lot of animals there, caged wild animals. Some of them could have been, been a vector, a carrier of that infection. So they are thinking maybe it was an original infection from the bat who might have jumped a genotic geno spillover, that's what it's called, that it might have jumped from the bat to an intermediate animal, then it went to the human beings, maybe through those wild animals. And lots of wild animals were seen in those images, including deer, ferret badgers, snake, even crocodiles, which people, which might have come as live and they were killed there, or some of them were brought in as caucuses. But according to China's authorities, they were all investigated, they were all swabbed, and none of them tested positive for COVID-19. So another information is most likely this came from frozen food from the outside of the country. This is what Beijing wants us to believe. Obviously, WHO has not really ruled that in. They have not really found any evidence to support that. So for now, they're saying it was probably the genotic spillover, or it could have come in from that frozen, those wild could have come in from those frozen wild animals, products, and that was consumed and that's how it spread. So I guess we'll never know. The conflict of interest for Dr. Peter Daszak was questioned that since he worked at the Wuhan lab, is there a conflict of interest? What he said that there was distinguished 17 investigators who all concluded the same findings as he did and he stayed quiet until everybody else presented and then he also gave the same opinion. And all of them together decided there was no proof that there was a leak from the Wuhan lab, although they could not rule it out, all right? In the meantime, Chinese authority also is saying that the US military lab should be investigated. While all this is going on, the US administration has also said that previous U.S. administration who blames China for a cover-up and for the leakage um, had said that they will not believe WHO's finding until they can verify from other authorities. In answer, of course, Peter Daszak also sent a tweet stating, you should trust first and then verify. Let the big, big boys talk, fight in whatever way they want. Us general people will just have to do what we should do wear a mask, get vaccinated as soon as possible so we can stop this virus from multiplying as well as mutating and creating a new threat. So far, the vaccines are working. Let's go ahead and get it done. Wear a mask, do isolation. Even if you get a vaccine, please wear a mask because you can carry this virus in your nasal, sputum, on your sputum, on your throat, as well as your nose. And you can still transmit even if you don't have the disease, you will not have symptoms, but you can be a carrier and give the disease to others. So you still have to wear a mask, but you will not get sick. All right, very good. Thank you again for joining me in today's talk. It's always a pleasure talking with you. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and I will address them. Until next time, take care. And again, thank you for joining me. Like and subscribe if you like the video and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.